Hi, and welcome to Claire. I'm your host, Adam Mackey, and joining me as always is Morley Kurt. Hey. And Gret Alexander. Hey. Ooh, that was a nice, I don't know, can opening. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got, what have you guys been doing this week, um, Gret? Well, the uh, the FFD collaboration video went live. Uh, it was scheduled for 3 o'clock in the morning, my time, which is like 8 o'clock in the morning, his time, uh, because that's when he releases videos on the regular, and I, I release videos whenever I feel like it. So I was <laughs> much more uh, – I was just like, yeah, that's whatever. Um, but it's uh, it's doing gangbusters. I'm really good uh, – Got a lot of good feedback about the project, and uh, the video is doing really well. So that just you know makes me happy. Um, and I've basically been completing. Oh yes, go ahead, Morley. No, I was just gonna say the project's awesome, but the video I think is is really really great. Like I just comparing it to like your videos from a year ago, it's just I feel like you've grown so much in your video making ability yeah. like the on-camera presence like the flow the pacing it was it was just like a very fun video i thought it was awesome wow. thank you i i think i've learned so much in the last year it's hard for me to watch older videos yeah which is like i would now i want to like i remade that one video now i want to remake all my old videos but i'm not going to but mm. i just know like because my son makes me watch like random videos all the time and so I appreciate that compliment. First of all, thank you. And uh, and I completely agree that I have learned so much. And I think that comes down to maybe how productive I was in the first year. Hmm. Hashtag nice. foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh -huh. So the other thing is I've just been mainly uh, concentrating on Instructables. I kind of let my – I had like a goal to do one of them – every other week and I kind of fell behind. Um, so in the last week, I think I put out three instructable posts or last week or week and a half. So trying to catch up on that and entering into as many contests as I can because uh, contests are fun when you win. <laughs> Only if you win. They're still fun <laughs> regardless, but it's more fun, way more fun and more money in my bank account when I win. <laughs> yeah. You and I have a different definition of fun. Yeah. Writing up, writing up instructables. <laughs> uh, fair. What about you, Molly? Uh, well, this week, um, I mentioned last week that I finished up my uh, Fools with Tools treasure trade project and had gotten that shipped out. Um, and the original delivery date was november 9th so canada post and usps are very conservative with their delivery date estimates these days because of covid and now the holidays coming up um but i had finished i got that all done just like it was fresh in my mind i wanted to get the video done um i wanted to get the description all written up while i had a lot to say about it and do the little like patreon exclusive podcast but luckily uh that arrived yesterday so we're recording this on Tuesday the 3rd. It arrived basically a week before this episode drops. So I was super happy about that. Uh, so I dropped the video on that project at 4.30 a.m. this morning. Grant on that uh, early morning <laughs> video drop gang, just because. Um, yeah, so I made her, Sag and May, a – she's really into like Edgar Allan Poe and like macabre aesthetic. So I made her like a field notes cover with uh, The Raven – on the cover like the edgar Allan poe poem and then her mm. signature logo embossed on the cover and i mentioned embossed in, or debossed debossed oh i said it right in the description but i messed up now i'm unbelievable <laughs> um yeah and like i said in last week um i filmed the whole thing with like that little desktop tripod and with the intention of making an instagram video so it was like it was almost entirely like macro shots um and I thought it came out cool. It was a fun video. Um, I had a lot of fun with the music. Um, so yeah, happy to have that put out. And now I can move on to the next one. But she was really happy with I it. I didn't she mean to watch that. Sorry, go on. I meant to watch it before we recorded, but I forgot. It's all good, man. And I was busy. <laughs> well, were you? <laughs> yeah, I was. 
she was really happy with it though she sent me like a super nice message so apparently though i um ruined the surprise right off the bat because i followed her right after we got our matches from crafts with Ellen. <laughs> um i thought i'd waited long enough but like in my impatience i had probably only waited like 20 minutes uh so. i waited until they did their they did like a thread on their facebook group yeah and i waited until then well this is the first one i participated in so like in my defense i i wasn't experienced in <laughs> Me, me too, but I just went. I was very, very afraid of like, like outing myself. So, yeah. Well, in my defense, I'm stupid. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now that that's done, I'm working on my next video, which should drop before this uh, episode comes out. So that is another commission. Uh, one of my good friends from school, he asked me to make him that wallet everyone knows from Pulp Fiction. And rather than getting rid of our clean tag right off the t- uh, right off the bat of the episode, I'm just going to call it the BMF wallet. And uh, if you want to know what that stands for, you can go watch the video, which should be out now. But that is was a very exciting project. Um, I didn't exactly replicate the movie wallet. I kind of did my own take on it and then made it into a little more of a minimalist bifold design. Um, And I'm editing the video to kind of be an homage to Pulp Fiction and Quentin Tarantino's editing style. So I was uh, yesterday I was like rewatching the intro of Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, trying to get a feel for like how he fades in with his credits and um, his the musical style. Like those are the soundtracks of those movies are kind of similar. So I sort of going back and forth between them so it was a lot of fun like trying to find songs that evoke the sensations of them so when you say the video is out now were you talking to the audience a week from now because i don't remember seeing the video okay i'm like did i miss something (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. it should be out uh by the time this episode comes out right because i have no idea what bmf is just fyi bad mfer there you go oh okay that that was a that was about more relatable way to say it i should have said that <laughs> yeah i was like bmf i'm like no one's gonna get that but thank yeah, you was, you can bleep I mean, actually, that, I don't bleep even think that out later fiction. yeah i will <laughs> just to get add more realism um yeah, yeah so and then i'm also working on my project for the quick Crete one bag wonder challenge so that is a, a yearly challenge put on by quick Crete concrete to do some sort of concrete project with under a bag of concrete I participated in it a couple years ago when I made my concrete fountain. Um, Mm -hmm. Actually submitted it after the fact because they reached out to me and were like, oh, you should totally submit this. And I was like, okay. (laughs) Um, So they actually reached out again this year and told me it was going on again, which I was very happy for because I had a concrete project that I wanted to do anyways. So kind of the stars aligned and everything worked out really nicely. So we got some 3D printing integrated into that. Got some ideas from our brainstorming episode a few weeks ago. Um, nice. And that one, I mean, it's curing right now. We'll see how it turns out. I cast the concrete today. So when is that due? That is due on November 30th. I'm pretty sure. Ooh, um, but I, I got will time. Double check. Yeah. I'm, I'm, is that, um, is concrete meant to be like the main element? Yeah. I mean, like, some of the featured projects they've done in, in the past are like concrete inlays. Um, there's a good amount of multi-material stuff that's been submitted, but I think the idea so is I can't like, just do my black rack. <laughs> no, I think like I think they would want to have the concrete featured to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, you can put in whatever you want, but I think um, if you want to like really like try to go for it, um, featuring the concrete is the way to do it. Hmm. So yeah, cool. Exciting. Adam, what have you been up to this week? Well, I've had a pretty lazy week, to be honest. I've just been working. I haven't really done much. I did. I designed my next three projects. Um, i got a few things coming up that I need to build. And then the only other thing I've been doing is I've been trying to decide whether I want to start a new channel, which is completely different. <laughs> I have been teaching myself for about two years now how to scream, Ooh. as in singing, singing scream. Um, so I'm trying to decide if I want to start a channel doing that, like, cause I know that I'm not the best, but I feel like 
having that progress in videos would be good, like seeing it. Um, but then I don't know. I don't know if that would interest people. Obviously, it would be completely separate to the whole maker thing and and that. But I don't know. Well, I'll think about it. I I won't follow it, but I will support you (laughs) virtually. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's a whole whole new whole new thing, like new social groups and everything. And yeah, it's crazy. Not a lot of crossover. There's a niche for just about everything. I'm sure there's like a massive online community for learning how to scream as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'd just be doing like covers and stuff but yeah other than that i haven't really done anything which is uh very relevant to this week because we're going to talk about productivity and i haven't been productive at all (laughs) (laughs) well then you probably Uh, shouldn't start out with what is productivity that's true well grant what is i can tell you what isn't i would actually say that morley is the most productive of all of us and oh, he's the one right. who should kind of talk and start the whole conversation because when I think about productive people in my like sphere sphere of, of people that I know, I immediately think of Morley. I That's think you're me. like the most, one of the most productive people that I know. Yeah. I feel like you're always working on something. Yeah. yeah. And, well, so, okay. Well, using that as a jumping off point, um, We've talked about this in the past and it is very nice of you to say, but I think one of the main differences between me and the two of you guys is that like, I don't really, at least at this exact moment in time, have a day job and kids. Like I just imagine that takes up so much time. So I am able to spend a lot of time um, working on my own projects. But I think one of the things that brings with it like a very specific set of struggles because I have a, this all this time I'm able to spend on things right now. But then the difficulty lies in trying to stay productive and motivated within that time. So a really large growing experience for me within the past few years is learning how to be productive in all the different things that go into this kind of like design and making and video creation and podcasting venture um, at different points throughout the day and in my week. Because there's so many tasks within this thing that we all do that require very different mindsets, I find. Mm. So like a lot of times I'll wake up in the morning, um, I'll sit down on my computer, I'll make coffee. While the coffee's being made, I'll start editing. And I might edit for like a couple hours in the morning, drink my coffee, have a nice gradual morning, and then move on to like my workbench and then start working on a project in the middle of the day. So a few like when we had Vincent on the podcast or maybe even before that he mentioned like it's it's such a simple statement but just trying to do what you want when you're working for yourself i find that's really important because having the freedom to do what you want isn't enough it's also the fact that like you have to be i find i have to be very allowable of myself to switch up tasks depending depending on how productive I'm feeling in that moment in time and trying not to get too bogged down and feeling like I should do something, but allowing myself to be like, no, like I really feel inspired to do this leather carving right now. So I'm going to spend the next two hours doing this. Um, even though I have this other thing that I'm working on because they all kind of are self-imposed deadlines in the end. So yeah, like finding those different little areas of productivity from like very creative work to very menial work and where those fit into my day, um, that has been a very big part of my process this past year. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I, to, to, like, thinking about that and going, like, I think when I think about um, how productive I am, I know I waste a lot of time. That I have a lot of, like, I have little bits of downtime that I don't spend being productive, even though I should. And I used to rationalize it with, I'm doing research. I'm just watching maker (laughs) videos as research, and that's productive, right? But eventually, you've seen enough that you can go, that's not productive anymore. And I actually, like, feel bad now sometimes watching 
uh, I've no, I don't feel as as productive as I used to feel watching them. Because in, in the beginning, like I didn't know what I was doing, so watching them was productive. Because I was learning how to like sync things with music was a really big thing. And I went, oh, that just like like went in my brain. I went, wow, it makes your video so much better when like little tiny things are synced with the music, like little edits. And like so, watching a video and getting tips from that is productive. But as time goes on, it becomes less and less. But it's kind of like productivity is like a, it's the measure of, of the rate of output per unit of input. Mm, like efficiency. Mm. Yeah. So like when you think about productivity, it's it's not how much you put out. It's how much you put out versus how much you put in. Yeah. And and kind of just like right off of that, I was thinking a few weeks ago, and I actually tweeted this because I, I wanted to remember it. I said – don't work so hard that you forget to work smart. I think it's mm-hmm. so easy to get into a rut and think you are being productive because you're working really, really hard and then forget that there's a better way of doing something or that your efforts are not being placed in the most valuable um, place that you could be putting your efforts. One thing that I've actually also been thinking a lot about recently is the 80-20 principle, the idea that 80% of your gains come from 20% of the areas in your life, whether it be in relationships or business or personal satisfaction. This principle can be applied to a lot of parts of your life. So I found mm-hmm. recently I've been really trying to be a little more intentional about how I spend my time and thinking, okay, I could I could spend this time trying to edit this video to a TikTok post, but at the moment, yeah, like a TikTok video may blow up, but like is it really how I want to be focusing my efforts? Like, I don't, I don't really see a clear benefit from it other than the fact that it's fun. I don't know. It's not, it's no more fun than making a YouTube video though. And from that, I feel like I have much more genuine interactions with people that I know and people who seem to be getting a more palpable impact from it. I think with the, the productivity and smarter thing, I, I, quite a few times I'll be in the middle of editing and I'll just stop myself. And I'll pack it away and come back to it another time because I think I'm being productive, but it's only be, I only think I'm being productive because I'm actually doing something, but I'm not doing it the way that I actually want to do it. I'm just mm-hmm. doing it so that I'm actually doing it. And then if I put it away and come back and then look at what I've just done, then I tend to change it and make it the smarter way of how I would actually want it. That is entirely my method of operations when it comes to editing. <laughs> I am constantly doing a little bit, getting off my computer, working on something else, sitting back down looking back at the last 20 seconds I edited. Um, and I find that it's totally necessary for my process. Like I want to mm. sanity check what I'm doing to make sure that it's not bad, you know, especially if I'm editing to the music and I can't go backwards in the video and change something because it'll mess, mess up the sync throughout the totally, whole rest yeah. of the video. Like I want to make sure that it's right. And that's why I try to give myself plenty of time to edit because I really don't want to rush the process. I want to make sure the vibe is right and the pacing is right um, and that I'm making it as good as I can make it. When I'm editing, sometimes my wife will come down and see I'm watching a YouTube video, just a random <laughs> one, and nothing to do with anything. A gamer video has nothing. And she's like, you, you said you were going to be editing your video. And I'm like, I am. And this is my process. I do some editing and I don't get up and like walk away or whatever. I just kind of like go and watch a YouTube video and distract yourself. Like it, it, it's a, you let your, your subconscious mind do the work in the background to figure out whether or not that was right. Yeah. Well, how many times have you been working in the shop and the next thing you know, you're cleaning something or, yeah. or like you're cleaning the shop and like, I did this the other week. I was cleaning my shop and the next thing you know, I was pulling the doors off my cabinets and putting in sliding doors. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell myself I'm being productive because I'm making it better for then being able to store stuff. But I'm not. I'm just distracting myself and not being productive. You know, I think it's easy for us to forget as sort of self-taught makers and artists that a really vital part of the creative process is stepping away from the work and letting things marinate and letting your subconscious brain work on it. I was talking to my friend Julia who went to Parsons School of Design, like one of the most prestigious art schools in America. And they never draw for more than like an hour at a time. 
they they make them go and take breaks. Number one, because you'll get repetitive strain injuries if you if uh-huh. you're sitting that long and working on something. And number two is mm-hmm. like you need to get a bit of perspective. You need to stand up, walk around, look at your work, see what you're doing. And I mean, like the best artists in history would go on long walks in the middle of the day. I think Dickens was known, Charles Dickens was known for like going on like these mile walks around London. He would spend hours every day just walking around and thinking. Um, it's It really is so important. And I think it's really important to not feel like you're not being productive just because you're like bouncing around or watching a video for inspiration. I mean, you know, if you're doing the stuff you want to do, if it, if it does feel like a waste of time, like, oh, this is time I could be spent working on something, then that's an issue upon itself. But taking the time to let things marinate and take a shower, go for a walk, do dishes, you know, it's, it's really important. Yeah. And like when I watch people like Jimmy Dresta, who is probably the hardest working person on YouTube, like, or in, like, I don't know, like, I don't think he sleeps because everything he does, <laughs> but then I also, every once in a while watch him and he's like, he's filming himself, like going for a walk with his dog and, and Taylor. And I just look at that and go like, right. He, he realizes that you can't do it 24 hours a day. You can't be on 24 mm. seven. Right. Even it, or 16 is. hour days. Because to him, even that filming himself walking is still productivity for his Instagram and all that sort of stuff. So he's still working, even though he's like having a break. You know, there's this. He just doesn't stop. It may look like, even though it it may manifest as work and may look like work to us, it it is technically play for him in that it's a it's a release from his direct creative process. Like he's not in the act of creating something. You know, those are two Mm. very different things. For sure. Some Instagrammers might disagree that your stories are creating things. That's but true. I completely agree. He's not physically producing a product like he, you know, he's not building 16 million bullet bourbon trailers. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's when I think about stuff like that. And I go, you know, I, I know for me, if I go and take a walk, it definitely helps. Um, mm-hmm. I My hardest thing is convincing myself to do that thing. To do the thing, like watching a YouTube video, like, like, like doing nothing is very easy. I don't even have to move, but I know it's not the creatively productive thing to do. So what, if anything, do you, do you have any tips on how to make yourself take the walk instead of sitting there numbing yourself out to TV? Well, I don't have a TV, so that's my first tip. <laughs> wow. Like, but you have – everything is a TV today. For sure. Right? For sure. We're, we're talking on a TV technically. So I have found <laughs> – how, how did you watch The Boys if you don't have a TV? That's right. a good point. Yeah. I have yeah. found that if I don't get exercise or I'm not active or stay cooped up in my apartment for too long, it has a very direct impact on my mood. Um, and I've become over the years really conscious of that. So I can tell that like, oh, I'm feeling bad right now. I'm feeling like there, there comes a certain point and people talk about this a lot in like CAD drawing and modeling. There comes a certain point when you're just zooming and panning around the model and you're not doing anything. You're just moving stuff around, looking at it from different angles. And that's the moment when you have to stand up and go for a walk and get a change of scenery. I find when there's that moments when I'm just like, I'm feeling restless but not able to do anything. You know, it's almost like anxiety, right? Like you feel like this, like I want to do something, but I can't do anything right here. That means I need to go elsewhere and get a change Mm -hmm. of scenery. I like that. I think one of the biggest things too is to train your body and mind into knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it. So I've never officially said this anywhere before, but I deal with like, pretty deep depression and anxiety. The other day I went to the gym and like, I didn't want to be anywhere. Like I I was so depressed as soon as I started working out and at the end of the class, I was so happy because it just changes your mood just so much. And I think getting your mind through that and knowing, so I went there, I'm like, I'm just going to leave. I don't want to be here. But then I told myself, I know that if I work out, I'm going to feel better. So like, if you tell yourself or go for a walk, because when you go for a walk, it releases, adrenaline and everything which then um what's the i can't remember what the word is 
but like the what like the happy drug serotonin um, serotonin yeah like it, so yeah so it releases that which then really helps and not just that if you're feeling like you don't have the energy or whatever to work on a project going for a walk is going to get you back in the mood and give you the endorphins and everything to keep pushing further i, I think well, thank, sorry go on grant thank you for sharing first of all mm. and <laughs> uh no it's and i think i kind of like i get yeah i get where you're coming from you gotta you gotta convince yourself that what you're going to do is you got to realize what you're going to do is going to have a positive effect. And I guess what you got to do is start doing that thing that might have a positive effect and seeing the, the correlation between doing something and what it it does for you, because you know, some things don't have a positive effect, but you do them anyways. (laughs) You get, you'll get to a point where like, if you went for a walk every day, say just once a day, go for a half an hour walk give it a couple of weeks and then you'll be like craving that walk and you'll realize that you're not functioning as well as you do when you go for that walk and that pushes you to go for that walk and, mm-hmm. and you know, like it, it all just goes in a big cycle. It, the biggest thing's in your mind. Trying to get it through your mind of why you're doing it and why, like how it helps is the biggest thing. And, you know, on that, I think that relates to a, another big barrier to productivity that a lot of people feel, which is getting started. Um, getting yeah. started on a task, getting started on a venture. Um, it, I feel like it's one of the biggest things that a lot of people struggle with. Um, so I, I'm curious to know what your guys' approaches are for that because I know it's something that everyone has to kind of overcome. And I'll, and I'll share what I – one of the things I try to do is I find I just have to trick myself a lot of the time. It's like when like – it's like, oh, you have to jump – from this ledge to that ledge to use like a parkour analogy and you say, oh, what's that? What? And then you jump and you're like, oh, I didn't even have time to react, you know? And sometimes it's like that when I want to start a project, I'm overthinking it. Um, For example, today when I was going to cast the concrete, I was thinking, um, kind of overthinking it. They're like, oh, I have to do this step and then that step and then that step. And like, oh, maybe I want to sift out the aggregate to get a sort of a finer mix, but I don't know if I should do that. So what I did was I put on music to kind of block out some of the thoughts in my head and have a bit of a noise so I wasn't all the way in my own head. And I just took the first step. I walked out to my car, got the bag of concrete, and then just slowly started setting everything up, laying everything out, kind of how I knew it would need it. And then at a certain point, I had no choice but to just do it because starting from that point just becomes trivial when you have everything nicely laid out. So I find that one, tricking myself helps sometimes, but number two, taking the time to do all of those menial thoughtless tasks that come with just getting a project ready. And then at a certain point, there is no barrier to entry and you can sort of just dive into it. I am a hundred percent with you on that. And I find even sometimes going to the store is the thing that stops me especially right now because yeah. right now going to the store is is a production right it is people there's arrows saying they're one ways and people are going through the one ways the wrong way and i don't like i don't really give i wish they would take the arrows away so that people wouldn't like have problems anyways that's a whole nother rant i i'm not getting into a g <laughs> rant tonight but uh i i agree it's like you doing the first step is for me easier like I'll do the first step and then lose motivation somehow. <laughs> mm-hmm. So for me doing the first step, I can convince myself do the first step. You'll just do it. And then I'll lose motivation because I don't know where to go from there sometimes. But even like thinking about this FFD video. So like six months ago, uh, Boris contacted me and said, do you want to do a collaboration? Like it was like five months of me knowing this thing was happening before I did it. I had the knife for three months before I finished his little thing because I couldn't like, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I didn't want to start it. So one day I said, I'm just going to grab it. And I actually made the FFD logo with three different woods and threw them all in the garbage because my, uh, I forgot to tighten the bandsaw blade. 
And the, when I was uh, resawing all the wood in half, it did not go well. And it all became way too thin. And it got completely screwed. And then I restarted the entire project. So I, for those who are on the makers on Zoom having coffee, you actually saw me cut out the FFD logo while I was I was working on it one day in wood that is not in the video because I just threw it in the garbage. And I didn't put that in the video because I also screwed up other parts of the project and I decided they were more interesting to, to watch. But I think it's a thing that I wanted to point out about that is I go, it was eventually I just said, you have to do it. There's someone's waiting for this. There's a deadline on it. They don't care what you do. They'll be happy with anything. And the same thing's going to happen with the Fools with Tools treasure trade. He's like the person that I have is going to be happy with no matter what I give them because I know I'm going to put my all into it once I finally get like figure out what I need to do. Yeah. And I think that brings up a good point is that sometimes it's easy to spend so much time designing and thinking of different ideas when there's no time constraint on something. And I think that is a lifelong learning experience is mm -hmm. not taking forever and ever to decide on an approach and to realize when you have one that's pretty good and it's good enough to start and then you can kind of refine it as you go. That is something I feel like I'm really in the process of figuring out and every project, it gets a little easier. I think um, with the whole designing for other people and stuff is, is another like part where my anxiety comes out is that I don't know why, but for some reason, my entire life, I go through every day I go through life thinking, what do people think of me? And then I think the same thing about projects I make, like, and this is one of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel was to get myself out there and try and get past that barrier of the anxiety. But again, you know, like I'm, I did this van build, that was my first ever commission. And the whole time I'm thinking, oh, he probably hates it. It's probably crap. Like oh, it's trying to get past awesome. that, you know. But but as you said though, like you spent so long on the FFD thing because you're thinking, oh, like and you know, saying that like people will be happy with anything you make. People, you know, like I today I had to take my drill with me because one of the legs on the bed on the van wasn't completely straight on the bottom. It was straight on the top, but the, it was just a little bit out on the bottom. And he said to me, oh, do you mind just fixing it one day? I said, yeah, no worries. And I did it. He still loves it. He doesn't care. Yeah, It's fixed, you know. But in my head, I'm like, oh, he probably thinks I'm dodgy and did a crap job because this one <laughs> piece of wood's not straight, you know. So you know, he, probably thinks, you're a, he but, probably thinks you're a good guy that has integrity because you went back and fixed it. Totally. And I right. Well, and I just see him every day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> everyone knows that like things break and things aren't perfect. But if you're the type of person yeah. that's going to go back and fix it, then that's that's as good as a person you can be. Was well, the the slats actually started um, warping a little bit? And he said to me, "Oh, why do you think it's happening?" I said, "Look, honestly, it's a van full of humidity, and you, this is just going to happen. Like wood moves, and it's you know." So he cut out. In his um, in the doors, there was like sliding parts of the window that you could open. He took them out completely, and put fly screen in, and now the boards are completely flat and has not had an issue because the humidity can get out. Mm. Um, but he didn't once did he blame me. My first thought was, oh, he's going to think I've done something dodgy, but not once he was just wondering why it would happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so to take it back to the whole getting started, I find the biggest thing with me is to just do something. Even if it's not to do with the project, just getting off my fat ass and getting out there and doing something, even if it's cleaning, because I'll clean and then I'll be like, oh, what if I do this? And then that gets me to do something on the project and then I get excited and then I start working more on it. And yeah, I totally agree. And that is how I got the idea for the Halo Health Pack first aid kit. It's because I just finished a project. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to start on next. And a while ago, I had an idea for making a puzzle box uh, with some 3D printing. Ooh, I want to make one of them. So I, I, I broke out some cardboard and hot glue, and I started cutting out squares of cardboard and hot gluing them together, um, just sort of seeing what would take shape. And then out of nowhere, I got a totally unrelated idea, which was the health pack first aid kit. It, and it's really incredible how sometimes that momentum can come from just doing something or something t very yeah, tangentially sure. related to what you end up doing. 
Yeah. For me, the other day on the Makers on Zoom having coffee, I was sharpening my chisels. And for no real good reason other than I just wanted to do something productive because it needs to be done, right? It's something that needed to be done. But I just knew, like, I just needed to do that to try and get my mind going on something else. And it was yeah. like a good, just like you guys said, so good, do something that you know needs to be done. Especially one of those, like, cleaning the shop is a great one. Sharpening your, your tools is another good one. It's like, do the things that you often put to the side because you don't have time. Yeah, and, definitely. And, the, and especially when the repetitive task, like sharpening a chisel, is... You're not thinking much like beyond, especially if you're using like a, a little honing guide, you're not thinking too much about it. You're going back and forth, back and forth, and you're, you know, just checking it every once in a while. It's like sanding. You're not doing, you you can, your mind can wander while you're doing it. And when your mind wanders, that's when I find I get inspired. And that's when I find once I'm inspired, I'm more productive. Yeah. And it, you need to let your mind wander. That's why I try to not always be listening to a podcast or an audiobook or something when I'm doing one of those menial tasks, because then your mind may not actually be in that nice wandering state that you want it to be in. Like mm -hmm. it's, I love podcasts. It's one of my favorite forms of uh, media. It's probably the, my favorite form of media, but I do have to be conscious sometimes of like, I have not had enough moments of silence in my head today. I need to... <laughs> not have someone else talking my ears or music playing and let that wandering happen. And I know for me, when I really want to be productive, a podcast diminishes my productivity. Yeah. Whereas, I find it can make me work slower. Like I'm more yeah. plotting. <laughs> right. Which is great sometimes. And sometimes you want that, like, you know, when you're sanding for an hour, you're like, I could use some something in the background to to help me along with this. But when I'm trying to design like on the fly, I I tend to switch to music. Sorry, you just cut out. I didn't get that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I you're good now, I, but I just didn't catch what you just said. I said I, I tend to switch to music if I'm trying to design on the fly. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was just yeah, same here. I was just thinking like you you were you were listing some of the things you do when you're like feeling productive in other ways or need a sort of menial task to work on. I, I'm I I, w I just wanted to like list some of the ones that I do because it would maybe be it would it might be helpful to people to think of some of those different sorts of ways you can be productive with your time if you don't feel like you want to do one thing. So one thing that I always need to do for my videos is find music. And that falls into like very weird times of the day. It's part of the pre-production process I find for my videos. So if I'm feeling like, oh, I don't want to start a new project, I don't want to get into really meticulous editing, I'll just open up Epidemic Sound and start looking through music, seeing what the new stuff is, seeing what inspires me, because that is something that undeniably takes time and there's no way of getting around it. Like I just have to put the time in to look through stuff and see what inspires me. So that's something that I a lot of times will reach for if I'm not really sure what to do. And editing thumbnails as well. Um, I'll just going through beauty shots and seeing like, oh, what does this one look like? Do I want to go reshoot it? Um, let me just put a, throw a mask on this and start playing with the brightness and see how this looks. That I find is a really handy one. I find it's very interesting that you do these things the times that you're talking about doing them because I only – Think, like music to me is I, I find the songs after I have done the story version of my of my edit. So I go through and do the entire edit into rough, like pretty close, but really like rough edit and then find music that fits with what I feel from that. Uh, and the same with the, the thumbnail is literally the last thing I do and probably shows with the quality of my thumbnails um but <laughs> i uh I, I that's the kind of things that i kind of look at and i go um it's interesting to me that you do those in your kind of down times i think it's a really maybe i'll try that yeah well i try to 
get a vision for the video like before I start editing the intro. Like I want the intro to be like done how I want it and then I can cruise on the rest of the video and just go. So I kind of spend a lot of time getting to zero. And then once I get to zero, I can like move forward in a very linear fashion, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of off topic. We can, maybe that's a topic for another episode is our process of making videos. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just think it's a, a very interesting point of like where you fill in your productivity. Whereas like when I think about trying to be productive, and like my like hints that or, or tips I'd give to people is that you have to have a list to me. It, and I, I'm constantly writing new lists all the time. There's lists everywhere and that's fine to me, whatever I'll pick up, whatever the latest list is, hopefully the latest list. But that's to me, what, what matters is I'm constantly reprioritizing my work on a mm. list format to go. This is the thing I need to do next. And I'm sure there's probably like an app that does it way better than what I do. And I don't care. I like writing on paper sometimes. I'm the old man here. Um, And that's to me like if I were – and then – so if I have downtime and I'm not – and that's time, I'd spend it trying to prioritize what my next steps are. Interesting. Yeah, I'm so so bopping around between stuff. Like I'm just – I keep almost no physical lists. Most of – what I want to do is in my head or scattered around sketchbooks that has random other thoughts scattered in them as well. Like everything is so cloud based, not in like the tech sense, but literally like clouds connected by lines, like in the word cloud sense, <laughs> um, which is good and bad. Like I, that's how I work well. Like I like having a lot of different tasks to work on. It's part of the reason why working in a very structured office job wasn't great for me because I like having total control of what I can do in any given moment and being like, no, now I'm feeling very meticulous and I can do leather painting. No, now I'm feeling very abstract and I can look through, I can look for a new podcast guest for into the spotlight or, you know, any number of things. Now I can edit a video and feel very like in tune with how the music and the, and the visuals match up. I like being able to bounce around and choose things for my own productivity, which which has a dark side as well. And that sometimes I you can bounce around too much, or I can find myself bouncing around too much. And that I'm, I'm finding myself doing that less and less though, as I realize that like you have to be generous with your time to give to tasks. Um, there's that's a, there's exactly a yeah, but that's exactly why I write lists. Is because if without the list guiding me. I bounce nonstop. Like I'm, I'm literally, unless I'm like super inspired to do a thing, I am bouncing everywhere and like doing 50, like they say like that you can't uh, multitask. I think I can. I really think I can. <laughs> like they say you can't do it, but I'm pretty sure I can. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty because sure. Because of the amount of stuff that I can, I can juggle at the same time, even though I can't juggle, which is weird. But, uh, I'm sure Morley can. <laughs> Morley seems like the type who can juggle. Um, I could juggle one handed. I didn't have the nice. discipline to learn right, but I did try. <laughs> Anyways, I can't, I can't do two handed. No way. This is weird. Uh, all that to say is I is I. That's what lists are to me. Is they pr- allow me to prioritize my work in the thing that actually needs to get done versus the thing that I'm often inspired to do. My problem is I forget to do the list. So I'll be driving to work and I think of all these things that I want to research or or like watch or do up, like look up and stuff. And because I'm driving, I can't do the list. I'm like, all right, when I get to work, I need to make a list of all these things. And then I forget what they all are. And then I don't do any of it. <laughs> right. I think, wait, Adam, just to cut in for one second, I have a productivity t- tip for you, which I found very helpful. And I know you have an Android, so it yeah. doesn't exactly apply, but I've started using Siri to like make lists of stuff while I'm biking or driving. Um, I know there's Google voice on Android, but I found that is to be like yeah, super cool. helpful just to just yeah, right. start talking and being like, remind me in three hours to look up this thing or. Yeah. That's like, I, well, Siri would probably make notes. I would guess. Yeah. And I think Google assistant does as well. Yeah. If you do, Hey Google. Yeah. Oh, f- <laughs> I was gonna say, if, if, if you do, the, if you say those words, 
And uh, then I'll start looking up stuff for you. And no, you you can't help me right now. Um, that was my <laughs> phone. Uh, mine, mine, mine's Bixby. Yeah. Bix- what? Bixby. It's Samsung's version of Siri. Oh. Just I, to finish yeah, this thought, thought though, yeah. and to bring it around to productivity, is I find I can be a lot more creative in my list making if I can just talk out loud while driving and and like start like making lists out loud than if I were to be writing it with my mm. thumbs. Um, in the sort of way that like walking kind of spurs creativity, I can be doing that mindless task and at the same time kind of recording those little nuggets of inspiration that I get along the way without breaking out of that yeah. state and you know like going onto your phone and falling into Instagram or some menial notification that or whatever. Is, I wish there was like a like a timer app that was like you can only watch this much. I know there's probably one that exists. There is. Yeah, but I don't want the kids. Yeah. But I want it to be like <laughs> the problem is I'll pick up my phone to do exactly that to write a list. And this is why I like mm. physical ones because there's no Instagram on my piece of paper. I pick up my phone to write a list and I like my finger just goes Instagram. And I'm like, I didn't mean Instagram. And I'll close that and it goes to Facebook. I'm like, what is happening here? Why aren't you going to the list app? Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, yeah. It, it, One more thing before we quickly move on. I think I think a big thing is with me is that I try to do as much as I can when not home. Um, so like I try to get, because I have the time at work to do it. I try to do my editing at work and my research at work, my designing at work. So like hard thing for me with productivity is trying to put things off and um, like save. I try to do as much as I can at work and save as much as I can for when I'm not at home, unless I can't do that. I e like making stuff physically, but I think that really kind of helps with my productivity because that's what I'm focused on while I'm at work. I know all right, when I go to work, I need to get this done. Um, yeah. as opposed to being at home when I'd have the distractions. But then it also affects my productivity because I don't have the thoughts in my head of at that time, like, right. if you know what I mean. So if you get inspired, you can't act often. Exactly. Yeah. Unless I make a list, which I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so just before we move on, I wanted to say like one, one other thought in that – Everyone has their own ways of being productive. So I would encourage everyone to not fall into the trap of saying, this is how I should work, or this Mm -hmm. is the way I should structure my time. Because the way you work may not be exactly aligned with someone else. And I have found that all the times that I've made a conscious effort to say, other people may do it this way, this is how I'm going to do it, and that is okay, and that is good, and that is what works for me. It's always a good decision. So I would really encourage everyone to like look inside yourself and try to find those things that make you unique and also trying to identify those things that you may be doing that seem like the right thing to do, right in air quotes, but aren't right for you. <laughs> and mm-hmm. don't be afraid to try different approaches. Yeah, for sure. Because that's where I find Cause... people get stuck is they're doing the same thing and going, it's so hard. It's a real slog out here. And you're like, yeah, but if you just do this other thing, they're like, oh, my God, game changer. Right? Yeah. The correct the correct answer to the question how to be productive is what works for you. Totally. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no one answer. And saying that, let's move on to um... – uh do let's do patreon all right yeah yeah all right yeah so um everyone who listens frequently knows that we have a patreon and we like to give a shout out to our top level which is our f clip and that is leroy from big rock timberworks there's still four spaces left of that too if you want to get a shout out um anyone who supports us on patreon also gets a key tag and we've got uh, Jeff has got his. Is it only Jeff? Dave, no, Dave, Dave got, got his. his. Yeah. Dave got his. Yeah. They've all been sent out. It's just Australia is crap with postage, so Leroy, it is on its way. <laughs> um, I sent I sent something to someone three weeks ago, and they still haven't received it. They live literally ten hours away from me. Hmm. It's ridiculous. Wow. Um, also get access to the bonus content, being the pre-show if we do one, and we always do an after-show. Um, 
And is that, I feel like I, every time I do this, I feel like I forget something. And last time I did. <laughs> uh, key tags? I so. No, no, no. You just said that. Okay. Key tags. <laughs> did off show. So, you know what? Yeah. Patreon, just go. If you can't do Patreon, just share our show. Um, we have an Instagram, yep. we have Twitter, or you can just share the link. If you can't find the link, e- message any one of us or email any one of us. We'll give you the link to the the Buzzsprout uh, for for a clamp and share the show. We really appreciate that too. Which yes. is pretty positive. It's just clamp.buzzsprout.com. Right. But that's like annoying to say. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, Molly, you want to start with your clamp nation for the week? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I support uh, Laura Kampf on Patreon. And she was actually my inspiration for doing these uh, little Patreon exclusive. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> these Patreon exclusive <laughs> little mini podcasts for the videos. Because she started doing oh, them as voiceovers for yeah. her videos. If you watch her stuff. I love that idea. Well, yes. And shout out to Laura for giving it to me. So she, such amazing idea. She does yeah. most of her, almost all of her videos with no voices. So she started doing little synced up voiceovers for them, which has kind of evolved into a whole mini podcast for each episode. And what's yeah, also if involved. I, if I ever get a patron, a patron, maybe I'll do that too. <laughs> what it's also <laughs> evolved into is her interviewing some of her patrons as like a little mini podcast so this week or actually no the, the first one she did which i finally got around to listening to she interviewed daniel daniel ublasis of multi awesome studio um and i'd already been following him on instagram and daniel is does really really interesting great work you probably have seen his tongue brush uh which was kind of his like five minutes of fame on instagram it was like a paintbrush made of a tongue what? um he is really interesting guy. I, I he had a lot to say in his conversation with Laura, and I related to a lot of what he said about kind of like creativity and starting his own business and everything else. Um, but that aside, it was just kind of the impetus for me recommending him this week because his work itself really is fantastic. Um, he's like a legit designer. He has his own studio, um, and his, but his Instagram account only has like three hundred odd followers. So. Um, I think he deserves way more uh, eyeballs. He makes really, really cool creative stuff. He did, for example, like um, the tongue brush for one. Oh, now I'm putting myself on the spot. <laughs> but he does really cool like animations and branding work. He also started the Discord server Makers Magnet. Yes. Yeah, so a very community-minded guy. And he also has his own podcast, which I haven't yet listened to, but it is called the Multi Awesome Podcast. Um, he will definitely add a lot of variety to your feed because he does all sorts of creative work. So check him out, uh, Daniel Ublasis at Multi Awesome Studio. So before I go on to mine, can we rewind one second? Does this paintbrush actually look like a tongue? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Like, like, a, like insanely like a tongue. So it's a hashtag useless invention. He might have used. Or does it actually? Does it actually like beneficial in a way? Because this is like really creeping me out. Just the thought of it. It's really and creepy now I need to looking. Look up pictures of it. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I'm going to chuck a Molly this week, and uh, my Clamp Nation is a band who is from I don't know what country because I can't remember because I'm having a brain fart. But I'm going to recommend Architects which is a pretty big band if you're in the heavy metal scene. Um, I threw them away quite a lot. My mates are always like, oh, you should listen to Architects and a couple of other bands. I'm like, no, I just don't like them. Like, they just don't get them. And then lately I've just been obsessed listening to them. Um, As I talked about at the beginning about wanting to start thinking about starting this other channel, um, one of their main songs, which is called Doomsday, I was listening to it and I was messaging my mates and I'm like, there is no way I can get my scream as high pitch as this guy does his scream. And then just been practicing and I feel like I've almost nailed it, which is like one of the main, like it it would probably be my first video if I did make that channel. (laughs) Um, And yeah, so I just, I don't know. If you're into heavy metal, check out Architects if you don't know them already. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. What about you, Grant? 
Well, I am going to recommend Ashley. Uh, I'm going to clamp mendation. I don't know. I can't remember how we clamp mendation. I don't know. Cl- clamp mendation. Recommend clamp mendation. I don't know. <laughs> it's my clamp mendation this week. Let's just change it up. Is Ashley Mini? Uh, she was. Uh, she's a great uh, YouTuber. She works with uh, Zach Herber Roosevelt or whatever his name is. Um, I don't Herbal? know. Zh uh, Fabrication um, mm. on the YouTubes. Um, but uh, she also has her own YouTube channel, in case you didn't know, and she makes some really cool stuff. And she was recently a guest on the Because We Make podcast, which is uh, a great podcast if you haven't listened to it. But uh, what I really like about Ashley is that she kind of just like does – she does a lot of like like completely different stuff than me. But what I like about it is she just does whatever she wants. And hopefully – and I think she has the same attitude with me. It's like – People are going to come to me. Hopefully, they'll see I can do just about anything, and I do whatever I want, right? Like I, and hopefully, people like that. You know, that's my mentality. And uh, you know, she's carved uh, a hand from a hunk of a butternut. She, the, one of the coolest things she she made was a little storage rack that had a like a carabiner piece in the middle of it so that you could take the wrenches out. I really think that was like an amazing little invention that when I saw it, I went, how did I not think of that? Um, It's one of those little inventions. Um, But she just made a bunch of cool stuff. You should go check her out. Ashley Mini, M-I-N-N-E-Y on YouTube and Instagram. And go... M-O-U-S-E. Yeah, well... (laughs) I also really, really enjoyed that episode and hadn't heard of her before it. Um, she's, yeah, she's such a varied creator and it seems like every new craft she tries, she's awesome at. Like her leather carving <laughs> yeah, is totally. fantastic. I love it. Yeah. So I have two questions. She made a hand out of a pumpkin? butter Butternut. Uh, butternut wood. Butternut pumpkin? No, wood. That's a wood? Wood, yeah. It's like walnut. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's okay. it's so it's, it's white. It's called white walnut sometimes. Right. Yeah. And you said ZH Fabrications has a YouTube channel. Yeah, Fabrications. <laughs> that H. I'm joking. That H. Because he posts like once every six months. Ah. And it's it's ZH it's with his. I know it's ZH, but he says ZH. So I was being cultural to him. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, I understand now. Uh, yes, yeah, he does. Uh, he does have one. I saw he put out like I think a, I know, a slingshot. He doesn't post real often. I think he put out a slingshot in January. I think that was the last video. Yeah, um, and yeah he doesn't post often. And yeah, I met I I left a on their um on their podcast. They do like a you can leave a voicemail. Yes. And I, I left a voicemail saying, hey, I'm thinking about starting a YouTube channel. What do you guys think of the channel name ZH Fabrications? I've looked on there. Some guy has it, but he doesn't post real often, so I think he wouldn't mind. Yeah. That was on the yeah. Ask Cast, which is currently on Ask hold. Cast. Currently on hold. Is it? Yeah. I haven't listened for a while. Well, it's because they haven't um, released a video or on video audio. An episode? But I, I'm pretty, but our, our man Jackman Works has another podcast, right? Well, there's the Pat Ca- the Paul Cast Pat Pat Cast yeah. podcast. Oh no, that's right. Yeah, that that's the one you were on. Yeah, I was on that. I was that's their right. one and only guest on the. That's right. You should go if you'd like but to think, listen to that. Haven't they made it official? Do you? No, they haven't. Oh. They, it's just oh. it, they continue to. It's the best joke on that's on the mean. on the world yeah. is you have to try and find all the episodes, which is impossible because one of them's behind a closed group that doesn't accept new members anymore on Facebook. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Um, so let's move on to our reviews then. So we have two reviews this week. Ooh. Um, now, the it has officially closed for the giveaway, the um, whatever you want to call Clamp. it. Clamp. Um, so... So, I mean, still leave us reviews because we love them and we love putting Molly under pressure because there's a good one right now. Um, but, yeah, so we'll be doing the giveaway next week on the next episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, because we, we just wanted to give people a chance to, to get their last ones in. But any that are left after this episode comes out um, will not be accepted into the giveaway. But will be accepted by us with loving hearts. <laughs> so... 
Our first review this week is from Devin Williamson. He messaged me on Instagram. He said he tried to leave a review on Spotify and iHeart, but they don't take reviews. Um, so this is a good one for Morley. Google Play is no more. Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, and he wants you to read it as Elmer Fudd. So if I seemed quiet when you guys were talking earlier, it's because I had muted myself and was watching Elmer Fudd videos trying to remember how he sounded. <laughs> See, I think in the future um, what we should do is Morley should read it and the viewers can guess what he's trying to – what accent he's trying to do. Right, well, let's do that's a let's great do that idea. idea. Let's do it for the next yes. one, okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. So here is uh, Devin Williamson's review in the voice of Elmer Fudd. I tried to leave a Skip. review. Spotify and iHeartRadio don't take reviews. Google Play is no more. But I would have said, what a great way to start a Monday. These guys are fun and it shows. Plus, since they aren't from the States, I get a new perspective on making and the world. From Devin <laughs> Williamson in the voice of Elma Fudd. So like I'm going to look up um, Guy. <laughs> what are you looking up? There, you, sound, you sound like someone... From Big Bang Theory. I can't remember his name. Uh, All right. So while you look oh, that up, I'm going playing? to read our next review. Kripke. Barry Kripke yeah. from, from uh, Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay. I haven't yeah, watched a little bit. Because yeah. he, he replaces he places everything with Ws. Oh, yeah. What's um, up? Right, so I, yeah. Yeah. So, he's, so our next review is from Jeff, a weird guy. Um, he left it on Stitcher. And I'm not going to say where he's from, so don't read what's in the brackets. I won't. And I've talked to Jeff a good amount on our uh, Mixed on Zoom having coffee chat, so I feel like I should yeah. have this one pretty good. Yeah. We'll see if I deliver on Jeff that. Jeff is one of our Patreons too. Yeah. So Jeff says – let me get in the zone for a second. <laughs> Shameful plug. Despite their obsession with squeeze clamps, this show is pretty awesome. Grant, Adam, and Morley are a good combination. They are bright guys with good discussions about making and living life. They choose good guests when they have them on and avoid rehashing stories their guests have told repeatedly. Everyone should give them a review because Morley will read it in your local accent. And then he says in brackets, I'm in Minnesota, so this should be fun. Ah, I like it. <laughs> I'd like saying I like, the, I feel like I was a little more Chicago. The I feel like I was a little more Chicago than Minnesota, but uh, I was I still like had, how you uh, said combination. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was good. I can- sounded, sounded very Canadian to me. Yes, pretty much. So- Canada is just North <laughs> Minnesota. When they get like when they do like uh, Hollywood productions and they're trying to get a Canadian, and they don't want to actually hire a Canadian for some reason, they just get someone from Minnesota. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We should have a riot. Me and... Oh, wait, Morley, you're American. Never mind. Uh. Um, All right. Any other business other than thank you to TF Turning for the theme song? Uh, No. I mean, I feel like... I honestly feel like we kind of just scratched the surface with this week's topic. I feel like we're going to have more to talk about in other weeks. But um, Yeah, for sure. I definitely think that this is one of the things that you could delve deep into some very specific subtopics. And if anyone wants to hear more about that, let us know. Contact us on uh, either directly to each one of us on Instagram or through the Clamp Class Instagram, Twitter. Don't go on Facebook. <laughs> so, so speaking of, you can find me at Make a Mackey everywhere on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, you can find Molly at Molly Kurt. Everywhere, same places, except for he has Twitter as well. And you can find Grant everywhere, the same as me, because Twitter is crap. Under the Grant Alexander. And you can find us, the Grant Alexander, sorry. And you can find us collectively on Instagram and Twitter at Clampcast. And that's everything. Bye. See you. Goodbye. I am drinking some white wine, and uh, the brand is called Bodacious White. It is the white girl wine. I think it's marketed as. Yeah. It's great. It's actually really good. It's very smooth. I'm a big fan. So Morley being a 
fancy white girl is definitely going to be the bonus for this week, week's episode. Yeah. 